Um, I'm going to touch on three topics, fertility facts, um, human fertility, and the choice. There's no doubt that uh, world population is aging. Infertility is on the increase due to multiple factors. Among them, the environment we're living in, the lifestyle choices we make, and there's a growing population that very few are aware. Uh, and these are uh, cancer survivors. It is said that currently one in 500 uh, individuals is a cancer survivor. So um, I believe that we need to um, look at prevention rather than curing infertility. So if I to ask you how many couples around the world are not able to have a child after five years of trying, anybody wants to have a guess? Hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions? Okay, we'll make it easy. There are up to a hundred million couples worldwide that wish to have a child and after five years of trying, they have not achieved that pregnancy. And this is data from the World Health Organization a report for the World Bank produced in 2011. But the true number of couples that are trying to conceive is currently not known. And the main reason is that the WHO does not collect this important information. The simple question of how many couples are out there that will, are trying for 12 months or 24 months and they don't have a child we do not know. We have millions of statistics about everything else on the planet in terms of health, but nothing on infertility. And everybody wonders why is it that fertility rates are declining. So let me share this with you. This is an American uh, data societal shift, labor force participation rate. And it looks as back as 1890, if you remember the picture that the chair showed you, 1890, return to the hospital, the little lamb sitting in the grass. 1890, up to 1990. The percentage of men employed slight decrease, but look what has happened after the Second World War from the 40s to now. Phenomenal increase from 20%, in fact in the 40s it was below that, 15% to 60%. And if you would look at it now, I bet the figures cross. So more and more women are entering employment. So it seems like it's all work, work, and work. And it, it appears that couples do have limited time for intimacy, for being together, they have less desire, and maybe less financial affordability to procreate. Everything is getting more expensive. And if you don't believe it, look what has happened in terms of work and female fertility, again from the 1900s to 2010. And in blue is female fertility, and in red is the percentage of women that have entered labor. So, more and more and more women are working and fertility rates have started going down. This one intrigued me a lot. And this is looking at females that have been pregnant. Now they have the right to take parental leave. And fewer and fewer and fewer of women decide to take parental leave, although it is paid. This is one of the best places in terms of social support to have a child, Sweden. There's no doubt Ireland is the best place to have your baby, but in terms of social support <laughs> afterwards, what does society give you back? How do they support you once you have your child in your arms? Very little done in, in Ireland, but Sweden is one of the models, and look what happens. Of course, men know how to exploit a thing, so they're more and more <laughs> staying at home at the expense of women uh, going back to work. So, couples are dreaming of having a baby, there's no doubt, getting pregnant, and having a child. But you might imagine that uh, these couples look like so when they're trying to conceive. <laughs> well, I believe that they might look like so after trying for 12 months or a year and a half when a pregnancy has not established. And this is what we have to deal with when we are trying to investigate and fix everything, but many times neglect the relationship that is outside our control or outside our view, of course. So, let me introduce you to a few issues on um, human fertility. Patients that we see after trying for two or three, four years, after all this stress, they're all wondering, uh, I'm getting older, time is of essence, why can't I get pregnant, it's all my fault, what if I don't get pregnant, dot, dot, dot. And just to show to you what normally happens, in order to conceive, 
when sperm is placed inside the vagina, they swim through the fallopian tube, and it's here in the fallopian tube where they meet an egg that grows gently and slowly over two weeks in the female ovary to be released. They interact in the fallopian tube, and then the fallopian tube transports it. Um, there is a magic carpet here, beating cells that transport this embryo into the uterus. At the same time, the embryo divides. It moves from one cell to four cells to eight cells to what is called a blastocyst, which is a, an advanced embryo. And this is where the negotiation with the lining of the womb happens, and the woman can find out that she's pregnant. So, how likely is it that somebody conceives? And this is a very closely knitted population that doesn't use contraceptives. And what you see here is the rate per thousand wives. That means how many out of a thousand conceive. And their ages are on the X axis, 20 years old to 50 years old. And you notice that it's never a flat line. It's a continuum of falling pregnancy rates as the age advances. But you can see that even as early as 32 or 33, the drop is quite phenomenal. And from 38, it's quite an abrupt slope. So it's all a matter of egg availability, as I'm going to show you now. Nowadays, we have means of assessing where does a woman stand in terms of her um, ovarian reserve in terms of her ovaries containing eggs. So if you measure in a group of patients attending for fertility services the AMH called anti-mullerian hormone, a simple blood test, you can explain or express or uh, assess the availability of eggs in a woman's ovary. And the red line is the 50th centile. Above is superb. This is super women here. And below, in the red is obviously a territory where you would not like to be. But once again, reasonably constant up to about 30, and then a dramatic fall as time goes on. So just by simply having a blood test, you can now identify if you, for your age, let's say 30, belong to this group here, this group here, this group here, and so on. And maybe have a choice. If you superimpose, the previous graph that I showed you with the uh, number of women that get pregnant according to their age, you can see this beautiful correlation between the number of women that get pregnant and the availability of eggs in their ovaries. As time goes by, less eggs, less pregnancies. And if you look at the tissue in the ovary, you can see dramatic changes. This is tissue looked under microscope where you can identify the eggs at birth at 25 years old, I mean, how many 25 years old are really considering a pregnancy nowadays? And look what a dramatic difference. There's only very few eggs left here. Rest is stroma. This is tissue that does not contain eggs. And at 50, you barely find any eggs at all. So first conclusion is that female fertility is age controlled. A peak number of eggs while the girl is still in the womb going down towards, um, at birth, only 2 million eggs and down to zero at age 50. The male is also worried, of course, when pregnancy doesn't establish. And uh, he's concerned about his scared sperm, or drunken sperm, or lost sperm, or um, <laughs> smoking sperm, all these types of sperm that are not doing their duties once they're inside. And I'm going to skip the anatomy, maybe, but just to remind you, sperm are produced in the testicles here, and the tubules, and they swim, gain ability to swim here, and then they're ejaculated. And they have a head and a midpiece and a tail that allows them to move. And this is an electron microscopy photograph where this is the tubule, the very fine entities in the testicle, and the sperm start being formed at the periphery. And as they mature, they gain longer and longer tails, and then they start swimming through those tubes. So does age affect semen parameters? There is some evidence that um, Men that are aging have lower sperm concentrations, and over time, I'm talking about over the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, trends show that uh, men are not that good anymore. And proof of that is WHO has reduced 
the uh, normal limit for a sperm count from 20 million to 15 million. So it tells us that it's okay to accept male, the males to have less and less sperm because we think you know, it's a fact of life. But we ask ourselves, should we really do that? So the Danes are always curious about this. In fact, the most donor sperm in the world comes from uh, Denmark, so they would have done a lot of research, and even them, they showed that the year of birth will affect your sperm production. So if you look here, these are infertile men that, and compared to fertile men, and the counts here that are low between 0 and 20 million are very high compared to this group that are fertile. So there's a shift towards lower and lower counts in men that are infertile compared to the fertile ones as time goes by. So to wrap it up in terms of fertility, humans are truly very infertile. No pregnancy establishes despite multiple attempts to conceive months after months after month. And talking about choice, it is your choice as females and of course educating your male partners where you would like to have a baby here because you can see that chances to get pregnant per month could be as high as 25% when you're 22 and 23 but will be only about 20% when you are 31, 31 and they grow dramatically down below 10% once you're over 38. So this is the likelihood to conceive if you have intercourse a full month. How long does it take to get pregnant? 80% of couples will conceive around uh, up to 12 months, 90% after two years, and afterwards you really have a big problem. So vast majority of couples uh, will be pregnant after approximately two years. So infertility is the inability to conceive trying for 12 months. And the main causes will be shared between men, women, and unexplained. We still have this part here that we don't know why a pregnancy does not establish. About a third are due to male problems, a third due to female problems, and it's good that things are shared between. So I'm going to take you through assisted reproduction. What can assisted reproduction do and how it can help? Firstly, it is a medical act. It is an end-of-the-line treatment. One needs to investigate, one needs to understand what the cause is and try to fix that, but if nothing works, it's good to consider, at least discuss, the possibility to do IVF. And it is a service that is provided to the most vulnerable, emotionally and physically. These are couples that are trying for years, they don't know what to do anymore. In principle, it's a matter of growing more than one egg, monitoring that, picking up the eggs transvaginally, and placing them in a dish with sperm, allowing interaction, observing development of an embryo, and bringing the embryo back into the uterus here, a black dot inside. The ultrasound monitoring is like this, so we can see these follicles developing every month in the ovary when you have the stimulation. Egg collection, you see a very fine needle here, piercing the uh, follicle, and the fluid is aspirated, and scientists called embryologists looks down at the microscope to see the egg. And this is how the egg looks like. So once the egg is taken out, it will look like so. And then other procedures that can be done, and this has revolutionized the R uh, ART field, is this procedure called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. And as its name says, basically the egg or the oocyte is fixed with a suction pipette, and a one single sperm, this white dot there, is aspirated into a fine needle and injected directly into the egg. And this machine here does it all. Of course, the scientist does it. And what you're looking at here is in that fine, small Petri dish underneath the culture and environment. So what happens afterwards is the development of the embryo, where the genetic material of the sperm and the genetic material of the egg has now combined. And it shows in what is called a fertilized egg. And that's the first day of development. And then tremendous effort to divide, to grow, into two cells, and this is um, between day one and day two. Four cells on day two of development in the laboratory. Sometimes we transfer on this day, sometimes we allow development further. This is a day three embryo. It has eight cells. You can see it nicely equally divided. And then this is a blastocyst. And here, the pole of the embryo is up here, and then the rest of it is basically forming the placenta. And you can see at the bottom here, Many people wonder how do embryos interact with the endometrium or the lining. It's this part here that tells you this embryo is coming out of its shell 
it's coming out to get uh, attached to the lining and be sticky. So we're coming down to the choice because time is moving on. So prevention, I think, is the key of, and that's why I believe that um, it's important to understand your ability to get pregnant and what can you do to um, make a choice in time. Are we seeing a societal time bomb? As, as time is moving on, the age at first child is also increasing. And this is more recent data with a 0.2% increase on a year. Every year, the age of the first pregnancy is increasing. You can see here it's 32 plus um, in 2013. We don't have any data on 2014 and 2015, but it's a constant increase. So women are getting older when they're having their first child. And of course, this is due maybe to work, to societal factors, to empowering women, to making a good decision, to de deciding that you only want one child and you want to be mature and ready for it. But it also could be due to a poor understanding of fact, an unbalanced education, or maybe misinterpretation of fact. Because there's a fundamental difference between women and men. Males can father a child throughout their lives, while women can only reproduce for approximately 30 years. And delaying your pregnancy and being a mother uh, when you're in your 40s increases the risk significantly towards both the child but also your own risk being pregnant. And just to give you um, an illustration, this is the risk of having a child with a congenital abnormality according to female age at delivery. So if you're over 40, the risk of Down syndrome, for example, or, or any genetic abnormality is increased significantly. So at 25, let's say the general risk is one in 500. Once you're 40, it's one in 66. That's ninefold increase. And once you're in your late 40s, it's phenomenally high. And these are risks that you assume once you decide to delay pregnancy. There's also an increased risk of miscarriages. Remember, there's less and less and less eggs, and in consequence, there have been there in your ovaries for longer and longer and longer, and in consequence, those uh, embryos that are created will be genetically abnormal, and the health check that exists in your bodies will take those embryos out. So at 30 to 39, one in four, at 40 to 44, one in two, and if a woman is over 45, her chance to, to get pregnant and hold on to that pregnancy is below 10%. So, can we circumvent this issue? And of course, this is something that you can do, part of your strategy, and that is to put your eggs um, on ice. And I have to say, I address the women mainly because men are in a minority here, so don't uh, take offense <laughs> if I uh, talk to the women in the audience. So, egg cryopreservation um, or egg freezing, it, it is an IVF procedure. The woman has to undergo the full procedure. It will be expensive in the region of 4,000 euros. The pregnancy rates depend on the age of the female. There's one pregnancy rate if you freeze your eggs at 20, a different one at 30, a different one at 40. And usually multiple stimulations are required in order to have a real chance to get pregnant. So just to give you an idea, in a general IVF program, only two out of 100 eggs become a baby. That's one in 50 eggs become a baby. Obviously, if you freeze younger, it might be far better. So you might need approximately 25 eggs to have uh, a pregnancy. But still, 25 eggs is a large number of eggs that you have to have frozen. So is there a problem with egg freezing? Well, they could be considered a slippery slope because it considers only the potential to become pregnant. That's all. It ignores the experimental uh, nature and the very low pregnancy rates. Um, it ignores the ability to successfully rear a child and the significant risks in pregnancy when you become pregnant. So if you freeze at 25 and you have your baby at 55, the risks of carrying that pregnancy are phenomenal. So being aware that the health of a nation is, um, um, in, is children, uh, I ask myself, what do we do really in schools to educate uh, uh, men, or not men, but uh, boys and girls about reproduction? And I think a lot of it is focusing on this part, which is no harm. You don't want somebody of 14 or 15 to get pregnant. But I, I think uh, we don't pay attention to important things like what happens in the world if we only focus on contraception. And this is the elderly dependency ratio um, 
from 2020 to 2060 to uh, uh, 2100. And this is the number of adults that have to work in, or, in order to um, support the retirees. So it says the number of elderly people per uh, 100 working individuals. And we'll be, as you can see, that the higher the number of people that have to um, be supported, the um, bigger the problem will be because we will not have enough people to actually support the ones that retire. And can you imagine how can people that will be in their 60s having babies support themselves or support the others that are retired? And what are governments doing at this moment in time? Very little, I think. I think they keep calm and bury their <laughs> head in the sand. They don't really support uh, infertility work or investigations and of course they don't do a lot of support in terms of postnatal support for families. So how do we prepare the young adults for life? Do we really educate them when to have a child? Do we educate them on what to do? Do we educate them where they can seek help if it doesn't happen? I think the choice is yours and I think it's through education, through understanding what the normal uh, process is in the female ovary and so on. But we also have to accept that society has changed. Our food contains pesticides, endocrine disruptors, sugars, uh, a lot of ease in everything, wrapping, plastic. We, our lifestyles have changed. We do very little exercise. People are still smoking. We need to do more outdoors activities. We have lost the work-life balance, I think, totally. And we need to know how to make the right choice in terms of partners, in terms of the job, and in terms of our priorities in life. And I think the choice could be uh, to have children when most fertile, that means younger. Uh, the choice could be to accept infertility as a disease um, and it must deserve the right attention in your life plan and of course in the environment. And maybe vote for politicians that support the desire to have a family. I'd like to thank you for listening and I'm very happy to take any questions at the end of uh, my talk.